Good morning, Ebenezer family and friends. It is so good to be back on one with another. Are you glad that you made it? I mean, all that you've gone through in the last six days, God has gotten you back to this seventh day. If you are excited about Jesus, can you just lift up those hands, wiggle those toes wherever you are in the chat? If you're putting some emoticons, some clapping hands, whatever, to praise our God because he has been so good. I want to thank you as always just for uh, your encouragement in prayer as we pray for one another, that we encourage each other to walk more like Christ. Uh, we are living epistles. We are the example of Jesus in this world as he has given us his Holy Spirit to work in our hearts and we can share Jesus Christ. I was talking in our uh, Bible uh, study uh, in person on Thursdays and we were uh, dealing with 1 Corinthians and we were talking about sharing the good news, sharing the good news with our co-workers and our neighbors, those that are around us, because we understand if it had not been for God's grace and mercy. So I encourage you to walk and share the good news of Christ. Don't forget about everything that's going on at ebcnc.com. We've got uh, teachings on Mondays at seven o'clock, Monday Manna, on Tuesdays, noonday Bible study. And then on Wednesdays on our, our virtual count we have at seven o'clock, we're going through the book of Hebrews, and it's been a phenomenal uh, study so far. And then again, uh, Thursdays, our in-person Bible study from six to seven, where we're going through the book of First Corinthians. I want to thank you so much for your prayers for our 845 in-person service, our 1045 in-person service, and yes, our 10 o'clock online that is reaching so many in our community, but also abroad. Please continue to pray uh, just as God is moving in Ebenezer. Uh, he is saving souls, adding to the body as he sees fit. Also, the day at two o'clock, uh, we're going to be recognizing. I think we've got a couple of high school graduates and uh, we like to bless them. Uh, Ebenezer has really been blessed over the years to uh, be able to encourage our young people. So at two o'clock, so pray for those families that will have that little ceremony today. And finally, thank you for your giving. Uh, God loves a, a person who has a cheerful heart in giving. He wants us to purpose in our heart. He wants us to give cheerfully, not grudgingly or of necessity necessity and God wants to use us. He has been a wonderful provider and I want to thank you whether you're sending it into our secure mailbox or using our app or you're in our in-person services. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you do. Well, I'm ready to get into the word. We're going back to the basics. I don't know if you can see my background. There's a person peeking through there. Uh, we're going back to that subtopic of guilt and shame, guilt and shame. And yes, uh, David is going to be our focus point. So I pray that you are ready to receive God's word. We'll see you soon. Coming from 1 Peter chapter 4 beginning at the 12th verse, and it reads, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you, but rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you insulted for the name of Christ, you're blessed because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or as a meddler. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. For it is time for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. In the morning, when I rise, in the morning, when I rise, in the morning, when I rise, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, give 
me, Jesus. You may have all this world, but give me Jesus. When I am alone, when I am alone, when I am alone, give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. You may have all this world, but I need sweet Jesus. Dark midnight was my cry. Dark midnight was my cry. Dark midnight was my cry. But I heard sweet Jesus. Oh, give me Jesus, give me Jesus. You may have all this world, but give me Jesus. And when I come to die, oh, when I come to die when I come to die oh give me Jesus give me Jesus give me Jesus you may have all this world but give me Jesus. Aren't you glad that we have Jesus every morning, noonday, and evening? Uh, just was blessed by that song by Minister Hampton. In the morning when I rise, just give me Jesus. Before we go any further, let's go in a word of prayer. Father, I just thank you so much for your immense grace and mercy, for never leaving us nor forsaking us. Uh, we welcome you into this place. Um, Holy Spirit, uh, would you teach us? Would you guide us? Would you lead us into all truth? Please make this word so plain, so easy to be understood that even a small child can be transformed to be like you. I pray for those who are viewing and uh, listening today, Lord, uh, those who are not saved. I pray that today be a turning point, uh, that they will open up their hearts, Lord, to you. They will confess with their mouth, Lord Jesus, and believe in their heart that, Father, you have raised them from the dead, and you said they would be saved. We thank you for your presence today, Lord. Again, please speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as we uh, get back to the basics, uh, we have been going through that memory scripture. Remember that James 126 and 127, and I want to encourage you. Let's get it into our minds that it can seep into our hearts, that we can really walk this out. So wherever you are, uh, if you don't mind reading this aloud with me, James 126 and 127. If anyone amongst you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their troubles and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. And that good, that really gets down deep into us. Uh, going back to the basics, we have been dealing with that subtopic of guilt and shame. And if you were with us last Sunday, I tell you, it was a heated one. And I told you, come on back. Um, Lord has allowed uh, me to dig even more as his Holy Spirit just been dealing with my heart. So today's focus scripture, 2 Samuel chapter 12. Just walking through, we we're in the 11th chapter last Sunday. So 2 Samuel chapter 12, I want to focus in on that seventh verse, 2 Samuel 12 and 7. It reads, then Nathan said to David, You are the man. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, 
I anointed you king over Israel and delivered you from the hand of Saul. I want to read that again. Right? I want you to really get this. Uh, the prophet comes in, speaks this to David. Then Nathan said to David, you are the man. My quick typist. Can you put it in there? You are the man. You are the man. Uh, for those that are sitting, standing, wherever you are, just say, you are the man. Because I want you to get that. You are the man. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel, and I delivered you uh, from the hand of Saul. Uh, I want to speak from a title uh, today. Uh, I almost got away with it. I almost got away with it. On last Sunday, uh, we were in the section of Scripture, chapter 11, dealing with David. And I, in, in the midst of that, uh, I was looking at a program, actually with some family uh, members I had went to visit. And um, that was about murder mysteries. And the title was it, I Almost Got Away With It. Um, and then uh, a few days ago, I was sitting with my family and we were uh, talking about the message and just the impact and how God is gracious and how God also tracks us down uh, in our shame and our guilt. And um, my daughter, she said, she said, won't you just title it? I almost got away with it. And so I always have to consult with the Lord. It seems good today. So that's our title today. I almost got away with it. Uh, from last Sunday, we were in 2 Samuel 11, 25. Then David said to the messengers, thus you shall say to Joab, do not let this thing displease you. Uh, the sword devours one as well as another. Strengthen your attack against the city and overthrow it. So encourage him. And that title was Hiding from Shame. Hiding from Shame on last Sunday. Just some points in review so we can kind of transition to get to where we are today. Uh, we talked about what choice will you make? Um, pleasure, then pain. Uh, maybe God is trying to tell you something. Uh, it's only going to get worse. And today we're going to see it. It's only going to get worse. Uh, living in the dark. And the Lord knows. Yes, the Lord knows. Uh, time frame again is 1000 BC approximately. And David, been raised from a shepherd boy uh, to uh, kingship. Uh, he has been blessed of God. He is known as a man after God's own heart. And, and we establish that's the struggle. That's the tension in the text that this is a person who loves the Lord, but he has gone into a dark place in his life. And I want to encourage you. Uh, some of you may be struggling with some things, but if you don't take it to the Lord, uh, your, your heart, your heart is going to get hard. Uh, and and I, I don't want that because the more we run from God, the more the enemy opens up his arms to embrace us. And uh, he is he is the prince of darkness and he wants to blind those. Uh, even he wants to blind the children of God. But I'm so glad for God that will race us down, will track us down, will confront us even in our sin. Uh, today, I, I want to just jump into this chapter and then we'll kind of get some uh, background and some history as we jump into it. Second Samuel 12, 1. Then the Lord sent Nathan to David and he came to him and said to him, there were two men in one city, one rich and the other poor. Uh, here's our first point. When God intervenes. Yes, when God intervenes. Now, this is this is so, so important. Um, David has an understanding of God's word, his mandates, his, law, his laws. But because of what he's done, you know, assisting, killing Uriah, uh, Bathsheba's uh, a husband, uh, this adulterous relationship that David forced on Bathsheba, he is in a place of denial. He's in a place that he doesn't want to deal with his guilt and shames. Numbers uh, 32, 23 gives us some insight. It says, but if you do not do so, then take note, you have sinned against the Lord and be sure your sin will find you out. Yes, it will find you out. And so when we sin, when we uh, make our mistakes and we knowingly go into these things, we, we're sinning as the Lord. Yes, we're hurting those. They're impacted that are all around us, but it is really God that we've got to deal with and God will deal with us. Now, now listen to this. It has been about a year. Uh, can you put one year in the chat wherever you're standing, sitting, just say one year. It's been about a year since the act of Bathsheba, uh, Uriah occurred, uh, pregnancy takes place, 
all of this has been about a year and, and David, he has been hiding from that shame. He almost got away with it. He is, he's been coming to the point within his life. I believe there's a struggle and, and, and if God allows, we're going to deal with some of the things that occurred and his struggle in his life, but he still had not repent it again i speak to you um, god has been walking with you he's been loving you but you know what's in your heart you know what you're hiding from take it to the lord so it can be dealt with he's, he's been hiding from it he's he's decided i don't want to uh, uh, deal with it um, but but remember uh, adam had time to repent too adam and eve remember when they uh, sinned and they took of the the fruit of that tree which god told them not to do they had a, a period of time but they chose to hide from God, but something happened. In their hiding, God is always going to show up. Uh, Genesis 3, 9, uh, then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, here it is, where are you? I believe that the Lord is speaking to somebody right now and asking you the same thing, where are you? are you 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 thought you could almost get away with it you 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 thought that uh you you wouldn't be plagued by the guilt and the shame you 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 thought that nobody knew but i want you to know god knows and he wants you to realize you cannot get away with this that god wants to confront you so that you can confess that sin uh, but there is a time of encouragement that that comes out of God's word, even when he confronts us, Hebrews 12, 5. But you have forgotten that the scriptures say to God's children, when the Lord punishes you, don't make light of it. And when he corrects you, don't be discouraged. I love this part. The Lord corrects the people he loves and disciplines those he calls his own. I tell you, that is good news. Uh, we, we, we know discipline is tough. If you have children, you had to discipline your, your children. It can be tough at times, especially if you're on the other end and you're the child receiving that discipline. But, but we understand our parents loved us, so they wanted to discipline us in the right way so that we wouldn't make mistakes. And, and Father God, in a loving way, has to discipline his children. Look at 2 Samuel 12 too. I almost got away with it. The rich man had exceedingly many flocks and herd. Now this rich man, uh, this is a parable. So Nathan the prophet, uh, he was respected. He was a hearer. Uh, he was also a seer. He could hear from God. He could see into the future. God spoke to his heart. And so he comes in and he begins to present a parable. Uh, and because the king is so powerful and anointed, the king could actually have the prophet killed. Now it wouldn't, have, it would have been a, 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 a grievous mistake, but it has happened before with King Saul. And so here Nathan has to make sure I'm hearing the voice of the Lord. God gives him a parable just as we see in the new testament jesus taught uh, by by parables to give understanding and he makes he says the rich man now walk with me here a uh, david is that rich man he is the king he is on top he has all authority he goes on in this parable verse three but the poor man had nothing except one little ewe lamb uh, yes you, you're with me the poor man is Uriah. Yes, the, the one that David had killed so that he could take his wife. That is the poor man in this parable, which he had brought and nourished and it and it grew up together with him as with his children. So that lamb, that little lamb, uh, that is Bathsheba. That is the picture of her. She was close. Look at this. It ate of his own food and drank from his own cup and lay in his bosom. And it was like a daughter to him. The relationship that Uriah had with Bathsheba was close. It was a, a tender one. At that time, oftentimes older men would marry young and younger women. That was just the context of society. But he was very tender towards Bathsheba. 2 Samuel 12, 4. And a traveler came to the rich man who refused to take from his own flock. Now, simultaneously, we, we see that, that rich man, uh, we see the traveler. It's all pointing uh, to David, the traveler is more of his lust, and I'll, I'll explain that a little bit later. Uh, the rich man who refused to take from his own flock, uh, David had many wives, right? He had many wives that he could have taken from to uh, quench his lust and his desire, and from his own herd to prepare for one for the wayfaring man who had come to him. But can you put in the chat, but wherever you're standing, sitting, say, but. He took the poor man's lamb and prepared it for the man who had come to him. So we see all of this entwined um, desire, um, that that wayfair, just, he just decides out of whim, I want Bathsheba. I don't want to take from my own flock, my own wives, and he's willing to do whatever he can do 
to get Bathsheba. This is the parable that comes forth. Now, 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 this is the point I want you to get out uh, of this. Um, there are at least two sides to every story. Yes, th there are at least two sides to every story. Uh, uh, we were we were in an accident years and years ago, and I remember we went across an intersection, and and someone ran a red light and 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 sideswiped us. Uh, all the kids' family was was in the van, and and thank God for His grace to cover us and protection that day. And we thought it was going to be a closed case, you know, guy runs stop light, but he had a version to the story, and and we had a version to the story. And I I had more people in my car, but because they were family, uh, we we came to a standstill and, and and it did not turn out the way that we felt that it should have turned out. There, there are two sides, at least two sides to every story. Thomas Long, Michigan uh, State Editor, he wrote this. He said, remember, there are always two sides to every story. Understanding is a three-edged sword. Your side, their side, and the truth in the middle. Any amens out there? You, 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 you've you been there. You're feeling me. I almost got away with it. Uh, Dolly Parton, Dolly Parton, last Sunday, uh, one of our songs was was sung. And, and actually today, uh, you, you'll hear it after I get through preaching. Uh, she, she has uh, topped the charts of country, but also gospel. Yes, gospel, Dolly, Sister Dolly. And and, and I've, I've listened to her, her talk. I believe that she knows who Jesus is. And, and in one of her songs, it's called Jolene. I, I believe that she She's kind of talking uh, about a, a Bible story because if you flip the genders and, and you replace uh, uh, Jolene with David's name, I, I believe that if Uriah could have sung this song, uh, that he would have had some of this same sentiment. So if you could just use your Holy Ghost imagination as I go through this song, I want you to think about uh, where David is and where Uriah was and Bathsheba and this whole saga. In her song, she sings, Jolene, Jolene. I'm begging of you, please don't take my man. Jolene, Jolene, you can say, David, David, please don't take him just because you can. Uh, your beauty is beyond compare with flaming locks of arm and hair, with ivory skin and eyes of emerald green. Your smile is like a breath of spring. Your voice is so soft like summer rain, and I cannot compete with you, Jolene. Uh, and I, I, I can easily understand how you can easily take my man or my woman, uh, but you don't know what it means to me, Jolene. Can you hear Jariah David? You, you don't understand. Uh, Jolene, Jolene, I'm, I'm begging of you, please don't take Bathsheba. Please don't take my man. Jolene, Jolene, please don't take him just because you can. The David, you can have anything you want, but don't take uh, Bathsheba from me. Uh, you could have had your choice of me but I, I could never love again. He's the only one for me, Jolene Dolly said. I, I had to have this talk with you. My happiness depends on you and whatever you decide to do, Jolene, 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 I'm begging of you, please don't take my man. Jolene, Jolene, David, please don't take her even though you can. Jolene, Jolene. David's act against Uriah is shameful. Can you put in the chat shameful? I, uh, on last night I said shame, shame. Just put shameful. It was a, a shameful act. And, and he almost got a, away with it. David refused to look at from Uriah's perspective. Therefore, Nathan the prophet is, is given this parable to speak to David to catch him in his deceitful ways. Look at 2 Samuel 12, 5. So David's anger was greatly aroused against the man. Now, then on David, he's listening to this parable. You know, he's he's listening to it. He thinks this is a this is a real guy, and it is a real guy. And so he's he's upset. He's upset. He's angry. He's tense. See, when we are hiding in our shame, when we think we almost get away from, it, we come intense, right? Because we build up layers and we we put stuff deep on the inside. But our body reacts, and so his anger he just goes to the top. I can see him furious, uh, moving up in his kingly chair. He says, and he said to Nathan, as the Lord lives. The man who has done this shall surely die. In the chat, can you put die, D-I-E? I, I want you to keep that in mind, die. Wherever you're standing, sitting, die. He said, he, he, he pronounces judgment. His, this is the king. What, what the king says goes. Yes, when, when, when the king said this, man, his, his officers, they come to attention. They're like, who, who do we go get? Where, where is his address set? We, we will take him out. Off with his head. This, this, is, this is judgment from King David. And then verse six, and he shall restore fourfold the 
lamb because he did this thing and because he had no pity. Looking as he's like, yeah, he got to restore the lamb. Before he dies, he's got to restore the lamb. But the problem with this, the parable is towards David. Here's the point. Living in a glass house. Yes. Living in a glass house. You, 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 you got to be careful. You got to be careful when you put judgment out real quick and you don't understand what's going on. And, and sometimes we all have judged some situation. There ought to be some amens in the house that we should have left alone because you didn't understand what was going on. You, you didn't understand the thought patterns. You didn't understand there was so many levels to it, but we quickly put a judgment out upon it. Uh, when you're living in, in guilt and shame, you don't realize that you are living in a glass house. How Jesus taught in Matthew 7 and 1, judge not that you be not judged for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure uh, you use, it will be measured back to you, David, David, please. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Verse four, it says, for or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck uh, from from your eye? And look, there's a plank in your own. There was a big plank in David's eye. He, he couldn't see he had a blind spot there. Matthew 7, Five hypocrite first remove the plank from your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye david is clueless he, he is clueless he is blindsided i always tell my kids they're all over the world i said watch your blind spot watch your blind spot how do you watch your blind spot you got to know you got a blind spot and you got to keep looking for it all the james poet writes this uh, while you were busy i, lo I love this quote. one of my favorite quotes while you were busy judging others you left your closet door open and a lot of skeletons fell out and she puts ooh <laughs> they ought to be so say, hey, man, I, I, I've been there. I judged somebody else and, and my closet door was open and all my skeletons follow. Oops. Yes. Yes. This is a oops moment for David. I almost got away with it. Look at 2 Samuel 12, 7. Then Nathan said to David, you are the man. Uh, thus says the Lord God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel and, and I delivered you from the hand of Saul. Here's the point. Call it out. Yes, yes, we 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 gotta we gotta have people that are using the Lord that can call it out. Let, let's call, let's call it what it is. We we use all this political language and we're we're trying to adapt to the world, but we gotta call some stuff out. We gotta get it out. And 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 those who God loves, I'm telling, are gonna receive God's word. David was a very acquainted with the ways of God and and the Lord's mandates. He understood that uh, God had instructed the kings in, in Deuteronomy 17, 18. Listen to this. Also, it shall be when he sits, that's the king, on the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write for himself a copy of this law in a book. So the king, when when, when he takes his office, he's supposed to really copy the law down uh, physically, and, and that's a part of memorization. As, as you're physically putting it down, that's how I memorize things. I write it down, and so it can get into my memory. But look at this, from the one before the priest, the Levites, 19 verse, and it shall be with him, and he shall read it. It. Here it is. He shall read it all the days of his life that he may learn to fear the Lord, his God, and be careful to observe all the words in the law. And, and, and it says, and of these statutes. This is important. So David is supposed to be reading the law on a daily basis, just like we're supposed to read God's word on a daily basis, getting into his mind, into his heart. Deuteronomy 17, 20, that his heart may not be lifted above his brethren. We, something slipped here. His heart was lifted above Uriah to, to have him killed and to take his wife that he may not turn aside from the commandments to the right hand or to the left. David is a murderer right now. He is he's an adulterer right now. He's gone through all these shenanigans. He's forgotten the word of God and that he may prolong his days in his kingdom. He and his children in the midst of Israel. But David thought he could get away with it. I almost got away with it. He did. In his mind, the enemy had whispered in his ears. And, and I want to speak to you. Some of you may be out there and you think you can get away with it. But I'm telling you, it is almost, you almost got away with it. But God has a way that's mighty sweet. He will convict our hearts and he will bring us to the altar. And I encourage you today to cry out to the Lord because he's the only one that can deliver you from this guilt and shame. Our first Peter 4, 17 gives us a, a, a thought pattern, even for the church, for the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. Yes, it begins with us. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel? 
this is a heavy part, that 18. Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, I, just, just wherever you are, just say scarcely, scarcely, scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Uh, the, 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 the Lord would prefer us to really come, and, and in 1 John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unright. That, that's his preference, but so often in our lives, we think we can get away with it. Yes, we think we can hide from the guilt and the shame that we can walk our lives out, but God loves us so much, you cannot get away with it. It's been, I said earlier, about a year. David felt that he could get away with it, but God is coming at him with a word to look at this 2 Samuel 12, 8. God speaks through uh, Nathan the prophet. He says, I, I, I gave you your master's house. And your master's wife, that's, that's King Saul, I, I gave him to you, the house of Israel and Judah. And if that had been too little, l listen to this, I also would have given you much more. God said, God said, what, 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 what more did you want? You had everything a man could desire. Here's the point. Never take your blessings for granted. Never take your blessings for granted. M much of our guilt and shame comes from the fact that we, we, we yield to our own temptations. Yeah, our own temptations, our desires that we have, and we're not clear to recognize that we're, we're, we're flawed. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the kingdom of God. We're, we're flawed. David had it all, but yet he wanted more. Any witnesses out there? You know, how many times have you said to yourself, if I could only get this, then, then that's, that's all I want. Or, or if, if I could only move here, or if I could only take this vacation, if I could only drive this and that, I, I'll be satisfied. But it seems that we always want more. This is the plight of our world. James the Apostle speaks led of the Spirit in James 4, 1, a New Living Translation. What is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Why, why can't we all get along? Uh, don't they come from the evil desires of war within you? You ever felt it? There's stuff that's on the inside that only Jesus can deliver us from. James 4, 2, you want what you don't have, so you scheme and you kill and get it. Didn't that, didn't that what David was? He wanted what he, what he couldn't have, so he had to figure out how can I get that which I shouldn't have. You are jealous of what others have. David was jealous of what Uriah had, uh, but you can't get it. So you fight and you wage war to take it away from them. He sent them to the front lines to be to be killed. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. That third verse. And even when you you ask, you don't get it because your your motives are all wrong. You're, you, 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 you want stuff, but you want it for the wrong reasons. You, you, you want only what will give you pleasure. David wanted that See, but just for his pleasure, James 4, 4, you adulterous, that, that's what he was. Uh, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? David is literally an enemy of God as he hides from his shame, walking this whole year, refusing to repent. He's an enemy of God. I say it again. If you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. I almost got away with it. Look at 2 Samuel 12, 9. Nathan speaks this, hear, hear this, walk with me. Why have you despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Now, this Hebrew vernacular, breaking this down, uh, get, it, it says that David knew what he was doing was wrong. Yeah, why, why have you done this? You, you, you despise the commandment of the Lord. You knew, remember, you wrote it down. You, you, you were supposed to be reading it every day. It was in your mind. It was in your heart. But yet you pushed through it. I tell you, that's an indictment to some of us today. How many times have we pushed past what we knew was wrong? We, we decided that we were going to get away with this one. We, we decided that we were just going to push through the mandates that God had all, the, the guidelines that God has said, hey, don't go past this. Don't take of the fruit of Please, please stay where you are. I got you. But we pressed on thinking that we could have it our own way. You have killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. You have taken his wife to be your wife and have killed him with the sword of the people of Ammon. Verse 10. Now, therefore, I almost got away with it. The sword, the same one that you used to kill Uriah, the sword shall never, can you put in the chat, never, wherever you stand, this in to say, never, never depart from your house because you have despised me. This was despicable. God was upset, 
furious at David and have taken the wife of Uriah. Yes, yes, the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Look at 2 Samuel 12, 11. Thus says the Lord. Behold, this is what I'm going to do. I will raise up adversity against you from your own house. David, what you have done is despicable. And so this is this is this is what I got. I got. I'm going to allow stuff to rise up in your own house. You're going to have trouble amongst your own family and I will take your wives. Yes, this is tough one here. I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor. And he shall lie with your wives in the sight of of this son here's the point one word a tough one though judgment yes judgment judgment i i i I, I want you to know this that that was heavy right what we've gone through what we read together but this judgment was actually very gracious you're like pastor what do you mean it was it was gracious well well, according to the law all right according to the law that david was supposed to be reading that he he wrote down uh, he should have died you're like pastor really i'm glad you asked me leviticus 2010 the man who commits adultery with another man's wife he who commits adultery here it is with his neighbor's wife the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death yeah it was great Jesus, what they had got God had all reason. He Nathan could have spoke said, and now you shall die. The, the same judgment that you put uh, with this person that you didn't know within this parable is coming back to you right now. But God does bring judgment, but He gives so much grace. If, if you continue to to hide from from your guilt and shame to do it your own way, to think that you're gonna get away with it, there is a penalty for your sin. Romans six twenty three. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is 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 is, is life, eternal life, and Jesus Christ, our Lord. I'm telling this some good news today thank god for jesus can you can you put in the chat thank god for jesus i know that's a little long but wherever you stand and say thank thank god for jesus look at second samuel 12 12 for you did it nathan says led of the spirit of god you 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 did it secretly but but i will do this thing before all israel before the son, this actually happens uh, with his son. Um, uh, everybody, everybody in Israel will see this judgment come forth. Here's the point. Uh, what's done in the dark will come to the light. Yes, what, what, what's, what's done in the dark, it, it will come. Now, now, now it, it may not happen today. It may not happen next week. But what's done in the dark will come to light. I found out. I found out. That God will walk a thousand miles with a man who's struggling with sin and who's willing to repent. Yeah, maybe some of you have some habits that it's hard to shake. And, and you know, you, you picked up from the world. You, you you love Jesus, but you're repenting of those things. You're like, God, help me. Help me to walk out. And you can sense that God is breaking that stronghold that the enemy had dug deep into your life. You can sense God will walk a thousand miles with you. But to a man or woman who is stubborn and will not repent, judgment is on its way and rebuke is going to take place openly. Yes, everybody is going to see your guilt. Everybody's going to see your shame. God is going to pull it out for your own good. But it did not have to be that way if you were to just repent it and give it to the Lord. Luke 12, 2 says this, For there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, nor hidden that will not be known. Therefore, whatever you have spoken in the dark, here it is, will be heard in the light. And what you have spoken in the ear and inner rooms will be proclaimed from the house top galatians 6 7 i I hope you're getting this today do not be deceived i almost got away with it god is not mocked for whatever a man sows that will he also reap i'm telling you confess your sins today repent god is there he's gracious he's kind look at second samuel 12 13 so david said to Nathan. Here, here's the pivotal point. I hope you're hope you're with me right now. Well, we haven't heard from David and we heard judgment and, and now now we, we've got this 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 monologue that David has sent from the Lord and, and now we get to hear from David again. And David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Now that's that's important. Not just I sinned. There, there are some people know that they've done wrong. 
and and they'll say that I've done it. I've done. But you you gotta you gotta add that part against the Lord. You gotta know that you sinned against God. You 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 gotta realize that your sin was so grievous it got the ear of God, and God is concerned about where you are. He said, I, I, "I've sinned. I've, I've sinned against the Lord." And, and Nathan said to David, "The Lord also." God knows your heart. The, the Lord also has put away your sin. You shall not die. I, I laid out that scripture for you. He was supposed to die, but God has allowed something to take place. His grace and mercy, this unmerited favor. Here's the point. Repentance and forgiveness. Yes, repentance and forgiveness. There ought to be some folks out there that just begin to shout and lift, lift up your hands and say, Lord, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your favor. Thank you for your mercy. Can you put in the chat mercy wherever you are? Lord, Lord, I need your mercy. Wherever you say, say mercy, mercy, mercy. I'm so glad for mercy that when I deserve death, when I deserved everything to be lost, God said, you know what? You deserve it, but I'm not going to give you what you deserve. There ought to be some, some of y'all running around the room. I almost got away with the theologian Morgan Campbell writes this. A man puts away his own sin when in sincerity he confesses it. That makes it possible for God also to put it away. You got to confess that sin. And when you confess that sin with a true and sincere heart, God does something. Oh, I thank God for the blood of Jesus. I'm going to get to the cross momentarily. David finally recognizes his sin. David wrote in Psalm 51, uh, 10 and 11, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. The character of God comes forth. Even in 2 Peter 3, 9, The Lord is not slack concerning his promises. Some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us. Can I, I, I know I'm working here today. Can you put in the chat long-suffering? That's a long word, long-suffering, but I want you to get He's long Long suffering, long suffering. Wherever you stand, says say long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I almost got away with it. Right, let, let's get this final verse, and we're gonna pull it all together. Second Samuel twelve fourteen. However, yes, God was gracious, right? God said you, you're you're not gonna die. We, we, we saw the judgment, but he, there's a however, however, however. There are repercussions to our sins. There are, even in God's grace and mercy, there's a penalty that, that has to be paid for, for, for all of our sins, our mistakes. Uh, uh, please, please, God's doing all that he can do. But he says, however, because this deed, you have given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord, the blasphemy. God said, you, you, you caused problems, David. You, you, you thought that you were, were doing this in the dark. People knew. that it, it, It's already across the borders now. It, it's all around. People, 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 my, my enemies are, are upset because I've allowed this to go on for a year plus. And they're talking, they're talking Bathsheba and the servants and the cooks in the back. They whispering around. And, and, and David, you were supposed to be an example of who I am. But now you've gone towards the devil's side. He said that, 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 that the Lord, the blaspheme, the child also who was born to you. <sighs> She'll surely die. Final point. Sin affects your community. I almost got away with it. Yeah. Sin affects your community. Your, your, your moments of pleasure that are against God, I'm telling you, it, it, it's not just impacting you. It, 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 it's hurting all those around. If you're married and, and it's happened with infidelity within your marriage, it, it's impacting your wife or it's impacting your husband. It's impacting your children. It's impacting the parents, the extended. If you're part of a church, it's impacting you. Like, like, like they don't know. They don't know. Yeah, yes, they may not know uh, in, in, in all the details, but there's something that we can feel on it. It just ain't right. You ever been around somebody like something ain't right? Something ain't right. A grandma's had that mother wit that like something ain't right. Something ain't right. And, and as we walk, it's called the spirit of discernment. We understand something. We are all impacted by sin. I almost got away with it. Uh, there, there, there are repercussions, and, and we all have repercussions to our sin. James 1.14 really walks this out. I've been memorizing this book. I'm telling you, this is heavy. It says, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Isn't that David? He was tempted. He, he, he looked at Bathsheba. All these desires started coming up. He's tempted. It's, it's his own. God didn't make him have that. This is, this is on the inside of, of David, verse 15. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. Oh, that, 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 that's interesting. God has already pronounced judgment on the child. Look at this. And sin, when it is full grown, 
brings forth death. The death of oh, the child didn't do anything. Please understand that didn't do, do anything at all. But because of the sin of his daddy, because of what he chose, uh, the repercussions of sin has gone into the community. It's it's impacted those that are around David. Well, 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 well please, please, please. Even at this point, I, I want you to know God is still giving out grace. Yeah, but hopefully, hopefully, if, if God allows on next Sunday, I'm going to deal with some of the Psalms in a little bit more detail that we can see how David has to deal with. He almost got away with it as he's repented and, and he's got to get back in the presence of the Lord. Uh, but, 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 but this, this will show that the healing process, and I, I want to get to the healing process, but today I, I want to, I want to celebrate what Jesus Christ has done for us. Are, are there any amens in the house? Because we have all flawed. We, we, we're flawed. We're flawed. We, we, we are messed up. We, we needed somebody to, to come from heaven to earth to walk among men that was just like us to be able to carry our sins and to be able to, to fully uh, pay the price for us. Please, please. We, we, we needed someone that, that, that could do miracles, signs, and wonders that can teach not under, but we needed God himself to be able to experience our temptations, but yet not, not yield to those temptations. There ought to be some 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 thankful folks today. Uh, he was the sinless Lamb of God that came for us. Can, in the chat, can you say for me? He came for me. Yes, Hebrews four fourteen gives us a picture of what Christ did. We almost got away from it, but I'm so glad for a Savior. Seeing then that we have a great High Priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God. Let us hold fast our, our confession, uh, for we do not have a High Priest who cannot sympathize. Aren't you glad that he can sympathize? He said he cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. He can sympathize what we're going through, but he never yielded to temptation goes to the garden of Gethsemane betrayed by Judas Iscariot goes up to a place called Calvary and there he freely is our sacrifice he is actually that lamb of God what you remember the parable that we talked about but Jesus becomes our lamb willingly let me show you John 10 18 no one takes it from me but I lay it down on myself that's of his life I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again this command I have received from my father Father, I am so glad on the cross of Calvary, nails in his hands, nails in his feet. He became the willing lamb that died for us, carrying our sins and bearing our griefs. He gave up the ghost. They put him in a cold grave. But three days later, he gets up with all power and all glory. Please understand, he did not almost die, but Jesus died all the way. He did not almost get up on the third day, but Jesus got up with all power and glory. And now he's seated on the right hand of Father praying for us that we'll repent, that we'll confess our sins and know that he's a faithful and gracious God. I speak to you, you cannot make it by yourself. It, it, this, this guilt and shame that you're carrying, it's just going to get worse. But let me tell you about a man, Jesus. Oh, he's acquainted with your grief and your sorrow. And today, he wants to show you how much he loves you. If you don't know Christ, but you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says you will be saved. It's by grace, through faith, not of yourself. It is a gift of God. Oh, embrace that gift today to the saints. Maybe you find yourself in a situation like David. You messed up. You've broken some stuff. People are hurt right now. And you've been hiding it. You've just been allowing pride to build up. Would you repent? Would you cry before God? Say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. He will. He'll forgive you of your sins. There are repercussions that are going to occur and have occurred because of your sins that only God can help you through. <laughs> that, that you can realize the uh, Romans 8 28 all things work to the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his plan and purpose there, there, there's so many things only God can turn around there ought to be some some amens out there only God can turn it around but I know a God that's more than enough today he wants to change you from the inside out would you pray with me father thank you for this word today thank you for your grace even in the midst of judgment. Thank you for using David 
using that situation to be a teaching moment for us in our generation. Thank you for making it powerful. Lord, I thank you for the ones that you're saving right now. I thank you for the ones that you're convicting right now. I thank you for the ones that are crying out to you right now, asking you for forgiveness. Lord, thank you for your mercy. We just give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Every time I try to make it on my own Every time I try to stand and start to fall And as I travel the only lonely roads alone There was Jesus When the life I built came crashing to the ground when the friends I had were nowhere to be found I couldn't see it then, but I could see it now Well, there was Jesus In the waiting, in the searching, in the healing and the hurting Like a blessing buried in the broken pieces Forgiveness and a price I couldn't pay. Ooh, I'm not perfect, but I thank God every day. There was Jesus. There was Jesus. In the waiting, in the searching, in the healing and the hurting, like a blessing buried in the broken pieces. the shadows of the hour.